hey everybody it is cold out here on the back deck and uh i can't hardly talk it's gonna be so cold i got the wind blowing out of the east and it's swirling a little bit but right now it's in a low spot so i thought i'd make a video real quick i have been educating myself on aquifers and there is an aquifer that are that are huge but the experts are talking about in turn of regenerating them i think that's the technology the word they say but basically as i educate myself on it i'll know more about how to talk about it so until then i'm not going to actually try to explain that i know anything about aquifers but i know they're very very important limestones sandstones and dolomites that runs through the ozarks region of missouri arkansas and kansas thickness the aquifer's thickness varies from 800 to 1,500 feet in the tri-state region, but is generally thicker in the southeast, I and central Arkansas. It's over 5,000 feet thick. Recharge. The aquifer is recharged by rainwater that enters through the outcrop areas in southern Missouri, where the aquifer's rocks are near the surface. Flow. The water moves west by gravity into deeper parts of the aquifer in Kansas and Oklahoma. Mixing. In the deeper parts of the aquifer, the water mixes with salt water from the Arbuckle group of rocks in western Kansas and Oklahoma. This creates a transition zone where fresh and saline water meet. Aquifer system. The Ozark Plateau's aquifer system is made up of three aquifers separated by two confining units. Use. The Ozark Aquifer is the most used aquifer in the Springfield Plateau groundwater province. Water quality. In Missouri, groundwater in the deeper aquifer zone south of the freshwater saline transition zone is generally potable. North of the transition zone, the water becomes more mineralized and may be unpotable. HA730. F Ozark Plateau's We're dealing with uh, Ozark Aquifer up here. And then the Memphis Corps of Engineers, they deal with the Mississippi Delta. So I'm still trying to see who the experts are. The government has a, a division that specializes in the science of, I, I think it's hydraulic, hydraulics. It's a type of um, science of wells and how you drill a well. And what, what can you, the whole principle of that is I don't have the verbiage for it, but I just wanted to touch on it that I'm educating myself. And I know it's very important here in the Ozarks to understand where our water comes from and where it goes. And so we can have generations upon generations living here in the Ozark with good, clean, high quality water. So as I educate myself, I'll post videos about it. Now, as far as how cold it is out here, I don't know. I didn't ask one of the lifeguards with the phone. I just, I didn't even want to know. I just wanted to come out here and just see if, how long I could stay out here. So I'm going to insert something in here right about now, uh, how cold it is. Because <laughs> I know it's, I know it's colder than, uh, I'm thinking it's like 55. I may be wrong, but it's wet feeling. There's no sun, absolutely no sun. Cloudy, and the wind blowing. Ooh, it's starting to blow right now. Coming around this towel onto me. It's bouncing too off of these walls as, as it swirls through here. But when it's not blowing, it's doable. It's not bad at all. Like right now, it just stopped. It just completely stopped. There's a whole science to cold weather therapy. I'm not saying I know anything or I'm an expert of it. I just know that when you get your ass out in the cold, it heals your body. I'll go online right now and tell you, I have not been sick since August the 17th, 2003. Now, friends that are really close to me, <laughs> they say, they know me, they, they know me real well. They say, you can't tell people that. You've had a, a, an occasion to say you feel like you got something developing in your throat and your nose and yeah, well that's when I actually cast it off. That's when I see the symptoms and feel the symptoms. I get in a hypersensitive modality of casting it off. And whatever it would have turned into could have been other people get flus. Mine just was like 24 to 48 hours and I'm back exercising. 
And we all have that ability. I'll tell you this. I haven't had a headache since August the 17th, 2003. If I feel a headache coming on, all I got to do is what Spirit showed me. I guess it's about day three or day four of my awakening. I, honestly, the buddy that was before the awakening had migraines at least two, three a month that were devastating. It just, it, it really, in my young life, it was, it was debilitating, especially when I'm trying to be on a job and do things, you know, with, with math and surveying and me not knowing. I had calculators to do the math work, but God, I get a headache and I lock up. <laughs> it, it'd be over. I had to beg people to help me figure out, you know, what this distance means. But um, yeah, August the 17th, 2003, about four days into my awakening, I felt that headache come on and the spirit just set me right down, said, lay down, go deeply into your heart. And when I did, because my mind was already so still, I was already in a different dimension. But when I did that, I laid down, and that's when I heard the audible words of my father say, you can't have a headache. You're not a body. Bam! I ain't had a headache since. <laughs> if I could teach this and figure out a way to show this to people and they could practice it and do it, would solve a lot of the world's hurts. And accepting to be sick is insanity. You don't have to accept, well, I got these symptoms, now I'm gonna be sick. No, you turn all that around, put the Christ energy in your atoms, your cells, your DNA, and your body will all of a sudden say, damn, he's ready to cast this sickness out of his body. And it'll do it. I'm a living example of it. Can you imagine living your life for all of these years? I don't, I don't know the date, 20, <laughs> I, don't, 20 I know 20 years, uh, past 20 years, so it's got to be 20 plus something. But live your life in a state of bliss and peace where no sickness or disease could lay a hand on you. It's wonderful. And I wish I could teach it to the world. Number one, if you're down and you can't get up, cry out on your Father, the Creator of all source, especially the source of everything that is eternal. And look around, there ain't nothing that's eternal except the light-bodied being that you are. And that's what Yahshua ben Joseph come to show us, who we were as that light-bodied being. That is where the power of Christ lies. Not a separation of a, 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 a physical body. No, no. It's actually within us, the DNA. It's the process of awakening is cellular to cellular. And your cells become self-aware and awake. And they take on their little priority to keep you healthy. No sickness, no disease, no headaches. Can you imagine what it'd be like to teach this to people? By just being an example of it is all I can do. I can't, I don't have the verbiage or the, or, or the creativity on that level of things to tell people, come to my seminar. <laughs> if I put on a seminar, something's changed. <laughs> I went up an octave or two because right now I can't coordinate my daily activity. I can, but you know what I'm saying. It's just things you can do and things you can't do. <laughs> but teaching this is my goal. Anyway, live it is what I am. Being it is who I am. And the whys and the wheres and the hows, I don't even think about them. <laughs> I know today's Wednesday. I know it's the 13th. I know the year is 2024. Baby Jesus is on the way. <laughs> Gotta love it. They already got the Christmas tree up here at Ozark Community Center. And it's a big one.
It's huge. I'll take a picture of it when the sun's out and you can see it. But it's, for you people that know Ozark and come here, you know it's huge, it's big. If you haven't come swimming in a long time, come swimming because they're going to close it to 27th. <laughs> it's going to be closed all the month of December. It opens up the 2nd of January and the year will be 2025. <laughs> I remember when the year was 19... Yeah. Oh. 19... Oh, 19... 1969. I was figuring to say 1908 stood out for me, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but 1909... I was born in 61, so I was just eight years old. But I had a, a type of a awakening then that it just was something I will never forget. But did it make me where I totally woke up? No. I just had a, 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 a reality that we were being lied to about everything and then I basically went back to sleep but I'll tell you those stories later there's a another one where yeah I know time changed to a point of unexplainable situations within people's lives my life and other people are having them as we shift through this consciousness. We're moving our vibration from this third dense reality of fear into a higher octave. Of course, you got to see the proof within you first before you see it in the world. So that's how I'm going to end this. Y'all be the change you wish to see in the world. Be it with all your heart, soul, and your mind down to your atoms and speak life to your body, your cells, your DNA, your mitochondria cells and down to the telomeres. Speak it with the resurrected power of the I am, that I am through the self-realization of Christ consciousness, the gift of Yahshua ben Joseph to give us the pattern type and awareness that we are an eternal light body being inhabiting this physical form for a very short time just to just to kiss earth one more time. <laughs> yep, when you, when you know who it is and what you are, you kiss it and all of a sudden it's, the lion lays down with the lamb in your mind. It just, there's no more war. And enough of us do this, there will be no more war. Nobody will want to fight themselves. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Hello. If you see someone, you're only seeing yourself. If you try to hurt that one, you're hurting yourself really bad. If you do evil to other people, the evil is going to heap back on you so fast now that the time is condensing into this now moment of this reality of love. You don't want to take no shortcuts. You don't want to do nothing evil. You don't want to do nothing wrong. That's why we're seeing the shift in disclosure through the world scene, especially what's happening in Washington, D.C. Yeah, it's a collective conscious awakening. The, the minds of the collective have been controlled by the dark. The, the so-called dark side of things, let's just put it like that. When we bring the light to it and through it, there's nothing that we can't accomplish. I'm getting on about building a better world, one of truth and justice and the constitution type thing. <laughs> I'm getting cold, the wind's starting to blow. Look at you, look at it. I can feel it. I'm going to have to cut this video off. I think I said five minutes ago I was going to cut this video off. I love y'all. Keep coming back. I really appreciate it. I can't slap the camera lens like I normally do because I'm cold and I can't do it.
I'm holding the <laughs> camera with one hand and I'm having to push the button with the other. Thank you for watching my channel. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.